different number one comics podcast issue 73 because comics have issues so why not us <laughs> we do have issues too bob i will say that my issue today is i can't stay awake so so if you're yawning <laughs> yeah. you know what it is <laughs> yeah. and with me each and every every week is my co-host with the most dan say hey dan that's me i'm dan hey bob what's happening um, on that TV show. <laughs> hey, Bob, what's happening? No, just what's happening. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. I mean, I, I think we could make the sequel series, Hey, Bob, what's happening? It'll star me I and like you, it. and we'll sit around and talk about comic books. Do people want to watch that? No. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to watch that. <laughs> we are a weekly comic book podcast that take a number new number one issue that comes out this week and we give it a deep dive review of the story the beats the narrative dialogue the art whatever else we feel like reviewing <laughs> whatever else we can squeeze in there and you know then at the end we tell you listener if you should continue on to issue number two or not a uh, very important thesis of this podcast yes. is that we yeah like you said we break it down and then you know Yes. Let you guys know if we think that we, you should spend your hard-earned dollars on the second issue of this comic book. Because inflation <laughs> sucks. It does. I was I was doing something I really, really shouldn't be doing, and I know that. Um, I went on to the comic book collecting subreddit. Oh, and, God. <laughs> yeah. I was just, you know, somebody had, like, sticker shock because I guess they had just rolled into their local comic book shop to pick up their pool. And I think they said it was, like, three or four books. And it was a $20 price tag. And, you know, there was just endless, endless, endless comic, com comments sorry, of uh, people saying, you know, well, that's why I quit collecting. That's why I only read digitally. That's why this and this. Uh, it's too much money. And I'm like, look, I get it. I get it that you guys used to buy comic books for 12 cents back in 1972. Like, I get that. <laughs> Those days are long gone. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you were also only getting paid, you know, like $2 an hour. Right, so right, now you're right. not. I mean, I get it. Things cost too much money. We get it. The economy sucks. Inflation sucks. But come on. I mean, $4 for a comic book isn't that bad. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you could be paying 8 You certainly could. And I certainly did on a couple of issues this week. So, yes. you know. We also talk about some books that are coming out this week and hopefully next week <laughs> and talk about news if there's news for that week, which is always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, if uh, James Gunn doesn't take it off. <laughs> always a toss up if there's news, but you know, sometimes yes. it happens. And today we will be covering. That's right, Bob, from Image Comics in association with Skybound, in association with the yeah. Energon Universe, in association with Kelly Thompson. It sounds like we're watching a movie, doesn't <laughs> right? it? Right? I know, right? Uh, yeah, we're doing Scarlet, number one, Bob, part of the... Uh, and not with the Gone with the Wind, Scarlet. Ooh, yeah. Scar what, what is that? Scarlet O'Hara? Yes. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, not the Scarlet Letter, not Gone with the Wind. This is Scarlet Ooh, from G.I. Joe, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, Bob, let's take a quick break. And we'll be back in a sec. And we are back with episode issue number 73 of the All New All Different. And I'm that devil. What the hell? Now kindly undo these straps. Welcome to Watch Mojo. All right. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> Wow, um, I'm going to figure out how to stop that, because that's interesting. <laughs> there we go. You know what, Bob? I'm just going to leave it in. You know what? Screw it, right? Um, I'm I think that works. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how much of it is picked up on. Anyways, anyways, we're back with number 73 here. Um, we're not Watch Mojo, so please just. We're, we're Watch Mojo if you hear this. <laughs> just ignore that. Don't sue us, please. Yeah. Please don't. We can't afford it, I no. promise. Bob, let's talk comic book news. There's none. It's <laughs> such a news light week. The only things I have for you are, well, I, I guess we'll get into the third one, which is something that we just touched on. But, mm -hmm. uh, of course, as you know, Beck Bennett of Saturday Night Live and uh, Modoc and a bunch of other stuff will be portraying the Daily Planet reporter Steve Lombard. Lombard? In Superman. I don't know who the hell that is. 
You don't know who it is. Uh, I haven't watched Saturday Night Live since I was like 10 years old, so I don't know who this yeah, character is. Yeah, I've dabbled in Saturday Night Live, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, it, it's kind of like, it, it's definitely changed from the 90s. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's a thing that's happening. If that's interesting to you, then there you go. Um, good for you. Monster High, Bob. It's getting a live action movie. I, you know, I just read this and I was wondering, I wonder if uh, this is on the news docket. Yeah, it is. It is, definitely. Now, I don't have much of a, I don't know, any history with Monster High other than, you know, it sounds cool. It's like, uh, like I, I don't know how you would equate it. Like, it looks like, uh, I think in cartoon and book form and everything, it's almost like Bratz, like those dolls, Bratz dolls, but they're like monster themed instead and they go to a high school that's that's monsters and mm. that, that sounds cool you know like sure why not you know this is coincidental timing but i just thought about this if the barbie movie hadn't come out mm -hmm. would this be getting made probably not yeah I, I i don't think so but i don't know again i have no problem with this we're we're obviously the wrong demographic for this you know this is n not to not to be that like uh simple-minded i mean i you know entertainment is for anybody who wants to uh, right. consume it so there's right. no problem there but this is obviously geared towards young girls so um we're old guys so <laughs> you know it's not it's really not, yeah it's yeah. not geared towards yeah, us it's, it's not geared towards us but it looks fun um I, I had a fun time watching the barbie movie i mean i'm sure i'd watch this i, I don't have any problem with it i saw that there was a uh uh pride book um that came out this week uh, monster high pride book uh, that just dropped this week comic so you know i didn't see one at our local shop but i would have picked it up if, if, if i saw it laying around so so yeah good for them getting a live action movie cool cool um bob speaking of live action movies the last piece of news because again we are in news light territory this week there's mm -hmm. nothing we watched the venom 3 trailer we watched we it on our own we just watched it together um it's very interesting mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about a lot of things from it before we uh, i don't know we probably won't do like a traditional trailer breakdown but just throw our thoughts out but first the name venom the last dance yeah that i mean that that's kind of odd they didn't choose anything more you know comic book related yeah there's so many like ish. venom um mini series that have like cool names and stuff right. uh we were just you know, we just read Separation Anxiety. I mean, I know that that goes with a specific storyline, but there's so many different things that you could use. I'm not right, sure yeah, what I The mean, Last Dance is. Well, that, and you could use, you know, something that's not related to Venom. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, you know, use, um, you know, Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. You could use okay. Final Vengeance. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the, the last... I think of The Last Dance, and what's fresh in my mind is a Chicago Bulls documentary. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what they were going for, but you never know, I guess. Uh, I mean, Michael Jordan couldn't make an appearance, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, oh, that would be cool. Uh, a venomized Michael Jordan. I would like that, actually. Hmm. Instead of blocking his opponents, he eats them. <laughs> yeah, and with, with that ridiculous voice and everything. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, uh, but... Bob, we did just watch it. Um, I guess Sony is saying it's the final film in the trilogy. Of course, I think we already knew that. I mean, good for good for them to actually sticking to the plan. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I mean, Venom has been so whatever. You know, the first one was good. The second one, I think okay. a lot of people thought that it kind of fell off from the first one, and then and they're still going for it. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm happy that they're doing it. I'm actually – I'm going to – maybe this is a hot take. Maybe not. I'm not sure. But, like, I'm still happy that Sony is, is still doing these things. Maybe it's just me. Um, but, you know, Morbius was like a swing and a miss. Uh <laughs> Madam Web. I mean, I loved Madam Web, but most people didn't. You know, it's actually pretty funny now. Now that I that I bring that up, one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to is a, is a podcast called How Did This Get Made. It's about movies. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if you've ever listened mm -hmm. to it or not, but um, they just in in one of their most recent episodes they covered Madam Web, and 
as the hosts were talking about it, they were like, this isn't like a usual how did it get made movie because like they were like, we actually like this movie. This is like a fun, entertaining movie, but it's bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I yeah, like I see that. Like, I mean, look, there are things in it that are very, very bad. Uh, Ezekiel, (laughs) this is very, very, all that ADR is very, very bad. But I don't know. I, I like the movie a lot. I think it's 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 a fun movie. It's something I would definitely watch again. Anyways, back to Venom 3, Venom The Last Dance here. I don't know. Just some of the things that happen in the trailer. Uh, of course, it starts out with Eddie and he is, I don't know, like in some kind of warehouse or something fighting some bad guys. I don't know. There's Who knows what the backstory on that will be. But uh, the, the point of them showing us the scene is so we can get that connected. Like we are venom. And of course that doesn't work out. So that's supposed to be the hilarity ensues moment. Yeah. I'm, uh, there's nothing hilarious to me about it. Yeah. I, I agree. I like, mean, it, maybe if they did it once, mm-hmm. it would, I mean, it would have been, you know, semi funny, but the fact that they did it, yeah. what, four times. Yeah. It was overkill. Then it sure. was kind of like, Okay, and not, <laughs> just because you do a joke over and over again does not mean it's going to be, does not necessarily mean it's going to be funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And then we get, of course, the symbiote, um, you know, eating the, the heads off of those guys. And then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And then from there, you know, we get some uh, narration from, from Venom and Venom saying, like, you take me to the most delicious places and stuff. I don't know. I think that uh, that stuff is a little too whatever for me. It's like, you know, growing up on Venom, growing up in the, you know, 90s and everything like like you and I did, like, Venom has a certain voice in my head. and <laughs> That is definitely not it. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Uh, Venom, to me, it, to me, they should have gotten Tony Todd to voice Venom. Yeah, it's like too cartoony or something. It just doesn't land quite right. But you know, whatever. That's here or there. Now, one. So one thing I've always wondered: when um, Venom eats, you know, somebody or a part of somebody, or in this case, you know, four heads. <laughs> does Venom have the digestive system, or does Eddie Brock have the digestive system? Because I'm gonna go with it Eddie wouldn't, Brock. It wouldn't be a good day for Eddie Brock when he used the facilities. Oh yeah, I mean that's got to be disgusting. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean I, I don't know. good question. I'm, I'm 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 sorry. <laughs> my my mind works this way. We're gonna have to I ask apologize. somebody over at Marvel. You know? <laughs> it's the only way we're gonna find that one out. Uh, but yeah, it's. You know, and, and it, it goes through a couple of other things. I can't think of, like, anything uh, that huge of, of note here other than, you know, really the end of the trailer. Um, uh, basically, the symbiotes have, or, or other people from Venom, other things, other other beings from other, Venom's planet. Well, as yeah. we've figured out, Cl- other Clintor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they've started coming to Earth, they're... I'm not sure what their mission is. Maybe they're there to find Venom. I don't know. Venom gets in uh, this crazy fight with the thing on a, on top of a plane. And I don't know. Again, like it's, it's pretty much just nothing happens here. Like I, I'm not seeing much that's that cool other than, uh, you know, of course, Eddie stumbles across a horse and he asks Venom like, what's, you know, we got to get out of here type of thing. And, and what's the fastest we can, we can go without killing that thing. And Venom is like, well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> and we Venomize the horse. And that's that's actually pretty cool. We basically turn it into one of the creatures from... It, it does look very much like one of the creatures from Avatar. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, that, that part was really cool, though. I'd say that's definitely the best part of the trailer. Much better than anything that happens in the front end of the trailer. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's a good trailer. I mean, it, it's kind of like... It, it, I mean, it, it's kind of like, okay, okay, I mean, this this looks pretty good. I mean, it wasn't a great trailer. It wasn't mm-hmm. one of those, oh my God, I have to see this movie. I mean, you know, like I told you off air, Deadpool, the Deadpool and Wolverine trailers, those have gotten me pumped for seeing that movie. You know, oh yeah, absolutely. The, those, the, are, those are must-see. Right. The, the Venom movie, it's kind of like, okay, this looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. 
you know, but I mean, it's not one of those, oh my God, I got to see this in theaters. Yeah. It's like, I can have fun with this, but right. probably on my own time, you know, whatever. I, I don't anticipate a whole lot of people going to the theater <laughs> to see this movie. I don't know. Just Sony's track record. And then, yeah, it's, it's part three. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, you aside, I know Madam Web has a lot left <laughs> a little bit of bad taste in people's mouths when it comes to Sony. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, they, they really have, uh, which sucks. I mean, I, I, I really do. I think that that's a good movie. I think if people gave it a, a chance, um, you could you could really see the good in it. But it kind of has that hive mind of going into it as a bad movie, you know, so... I think that was a, a huge detriment to it. And then, uh, of course, Morbius didn't do it any favors. So, I don't know. Um, I'm still, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm still very, very excited to see what Craven, Craven the Hunter is. If it ever gets released. I think it will. I, I don't see. Uh, I don't know. It, it's, been to, it's been through, what, two, two pushbacks already? Mm -hmm. But I, I don't see Sony trashing that it maybe it's gonna that. maybe it's gonna become like the uh roger corman fantastic four where it's <laughs> you know all the way done but we're not gonna release it uh, well, i hope not um or more recent the uh, acme movie and the uh what was it batgirl um yeah both of those yeah well, wasn't, wasn't that in uh wasn't that in production when it got scrapped what batgirl was it in production or was it pre-production when it got scrapped? I, I feel like it was pretty close to done, to tell you the truth. Yeah, because, I mean, as far as I know, they had they had most of the cast rounded out. Yeah, I think that it had been shot and stuff. I, I think it was maybe in post. I don't know. I Don't quote me, but uh, the Acme movie was done, wasn't it? I think so. I don't know. Very, very interesting stuff here, but... Yeah, um, who knows why uh, these studios do what they do. I don't know, Bob. That's really all the news I have. I was going to ask you one question. Yes. Um, so feel free if you've watched it or if you haven't. I have nothing to say because I don't know. But <laughs> uh, the new Star Wars show, have you mm -hmm. have you watched any of it? How was it released? Was I, it I did. It, oh. So, it, I mean, it seems to be... It seems to be um, following the trend of... I believe it's pretty much been all of Star Wars live action, where the first day is a two episode release, mm. and of course I didn't watch you know the first two episodes when they first came out because, you know I I was preoccupied till mm. eleven thirty twelve o'clock yeah. so it's it's kind of and each of them is. At least 35, 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, I am <laughs> kind of a little too tired to want to watch it, um, you know, um, I guess that morning or whatever you want to say. So mm -hmm. actually, I, I watched them, uh, I watched them both yesterday. Okay. And I mean, it's, it, it's it, at least the first two episodes, I mean, I think, you'll, I think are good. I mean, I could definitely see. Because I actually went to my uh, local comic shop today, Gotham City Limits, to get my comics. Mm -hmm. And the owner, Ben, was actually talking to another uh, couple of customers about, um, you know, have they seen the new Star Wars series? And have they seen it? And, you know, Ben said that he's had about two or three customers come in and said, and haven't said, you know, great things about it. Mm hmm and you know, um, one customer he was talking to said, you know, she enjoyed it. And I mean, can I say it's the you know the best live action thing so far? No, I I can't say it's the best live action thing so far. I mean, I'm I'm definitely enjoying it. I mean, there um, there are definitely things in there that's kind of like you know who is this and what mm -hmm. is this and. You know the good the good thing is is of course you know Star Wars fans being as rabid as you know Star Wars fans are and I'm lumping myself in as one <laughs> of those, but of course you know if you do a certain character if you don't portray, portray them just right or you don't portray this element just right or yep. anything like this you know they're gonna be up in arms about it you know it's gonna be 
torches and pitchforks, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, to put it to put it in a better way. But you know, the good thing is this: the acolyte is supposed to take place in the High Republic era, which is about a hundred, about you know, between one and two hundred years before the, you know, rise of the Empire. Mm-hmm. So you know, you have characters which don't have a lot of backstory or anything like that but that's a, that's a good thing because you know it gives the creators a little bit of leeway to tell you know their story and tell these new characters give them a story give them a background mm-hmm. uh which there's gonna be a movie um coming up in the next few years i can't remember who's directing it offhand but it's going to take place in the Old Republic era, which is God, uh, tens of thousands of years before, you know, the movies take place. So, I mean, the director's really going to be able to cut loose on that movie. And, and that sounds fun. Something with uh, a little bit less of a template to, to go off of. Right. And, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars take place in... A galaxy, so mm-hmm. I mean, th- there are going to be multiple different corners of the galaxy. You don't have to focus on one side of the galaxy, which it's you know kind of nice not you know focus in on the Skywalker portion of the galaxy or anything like that. Look, I'd be fine with an entire series that just focuses on Planet Hoth, nothing else. That's my <laughs> dream. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, 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 Kathleen uh, Kennedy, you know my. Uh, email well i mean especially as hot as it is right now (laughs) in florida right it might be nice nice, yeah it might be nice to live on (laughs) hot you're not wrong um so this one's interesting because uh, again i know nothing about this i i read a little uh blurb for it while while you were talking and i'll go back Mm -hmm. to that in a second but um basically you were talking about Star Wars fans, and mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm hoping that these people aren't fans. There's something else, but this has been review bombed. So, sadly, you know, and of course it's been yeah. everything. Everything <laughs> is being review bombed, right? Nowadays. It's like not even news anymore. Which but... way did that term come from? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, two years ago, nobody knew what the hell review bombed was, yeah, and then all of a sudden, it's I mean, just it, everything it's now. in the zeitgeist right now. It definitely is, um, and and it sucks, but. I know at least people like you and I, we're not looking at Rotten Tomatoes for, for any suggestions or... or uh, Rotten Tomatoes is not the be-all, end-all of review. It's honestly not anything for me. I mean, now that we know, you know, you, you can you can buy your reviews on there and all of that. Yeah, and yeah. Why even look yeah. at it? But uh, it's been review bombed, and it's actually got a critical rating of 93%, which is very high on those first two episodes. The audience score is what's been review bombed. 31%. So look at that discrepancy in, in critical versus audience. That's a huge discrepancy. Um, and uh, same thing on Metacritic. It's uh, 4.1 on Metacritic. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's it's like a review bomb campaign. I don't know any reason why. Like, obviously, I don't want to get into political stuff here or anything like that. But I imagine it's something to do with something okay, like that. Okay, and, but, you know, that's always been the th- uh, thing about Star Wars. Mm-hmm. If the critics like it... Then the audience, <laughs> the audience doesn't, like doesn't. I mean, famously, you know, the the original movies were not were not really liked by critics. Oh yeah, they weren't critical successes. No, but all. I mean, and I think they did pretty well for themselves. I think so. I mean, we're still talking about now, right? In right. Right. Year of the Skywalker, but uh, yeah. Um, I, I just really quick, and I'm, I'm more so doing this for myself, just because I haven't really read it, but the mm-hmm. little the little synopsis is a, a former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, but discovers the forces they are, sorry, they confront are more sinister than ever anticipated. So that's like the purpose of the show. Bob, one last question, Star Wars related, mm-hmm. and I know it's not out yet, so if if you don't have anything for it, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know the name of it. The Jude Law Show, tell me again. Skeleton Crew. Skeleton Crew, okay. okay, mm-hmm. okay. So Skeleton Crew, um, the plot for that is is obviously something very different from this. Um, yeah. 
Actually, I don't even know what my question is other than it just looks so cool. I'm, I'm really excited for that to come out. That is going to be my reintroduction into I mean, Star it's, Wars. It's, so, it's, you know, I'm excited. It's Jude Law. That. Yeah, exactly. Jude Law's great. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, I, I don't know. Unless you have anything else you want to say about it, I think that'll wrap up the news portion. Well, I mean, it, it, and this is in comic book related news, mm-hmm. but it, it's 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 a Star Wars piece of news. Yep. And it, it's just, it's just one of those oh my god, <laughs> you know, kind of things. So, of course, we all know how you know older comics how they can go for big money. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my one of my really good buddies um, texted me the other night. So, uh, famously, um, there was supposed to be a toy release. Mm-hmm. Um, back when the first movie came, or back when the uh, um, third movie came out, Return of the Jedi, it was a rocket firing Boba Fett. It actually fired rockets. Okay. But it never got released. Mm-hmm. It was a mail way where if you you know mailed something off, which you know most people don't know about nowadays, <laughs> if you mail something off, you got this in the mail. Oh, yes, I'm familiar with this. Okay, okay. I mean, I don't know where the story's going, but I'm familiar with this toy. Right. And famously, it got scrapped mm-hmm. at, the, at the 11th hour um, because Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm. they had spaceships that would fire missiles. And we had some children choke on ah, said missiles. No. So they had to retool it. Where, you know, the rocket was just solid mm-hmm. and it didn't have the firing action. So, I'd say within the past, I don't know, 15, 20, maybe 25 years, there's been prototypes that have leaked. And I mean, when I say prototypes, I mean uh, just, as far as I know, maybe a handful. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And they go for really, really big money. Sure. Because, of course, the toy was never released. And there was one that was sold in 2022. And mind you, of course, with comics, it all depends on condition. Yep. But the one in 2022, I would say, went for over $250,000. Wow. And recently, there was one that was just sold at auction. And this is only about two years after the last one sold. Mm -hmm. Can you guess how much that one went for? Okay, tell me again the the number of the the one before this one. The one before this one, I I would like to say $250,000, maybe $260,000. God. Uh, $750,000. Wow, you overshot that actually. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would, look, I, I, you know, I wanted to go big. Half a million. Yes, over half a million dollars. Wow. In t- so in two years, it doubled in value. Jeez, makes sense though. I mean, as as you can uh, attest, the Star Wars um, <laughs> collectible crowd is no joke. So yeah, again, while it wasn't comic book related, it was one of those. You know, being comic book fans, we know how those older books can go for big mm-hmm. money. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, cool stuff. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to pull out my uh, Star Wars action figures. Uh, we're going to play with those for a second. We'll be right back. <laughs> and we are back with episode number 73 of the all-new, all-different number one comics podcast. Here to talk to you about my dog uh, singing in the background and <laughs> some new comic books that came out this week. Bob, it's also a pretty light week for books that came out. I mean, I did see that. Yes, my wallet wouldn't tell you that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, the synonyms will do that too. Yeah, yeah uh, let's start with Marvel. With Marvel Comics, we got Amazing Spider-Man issue number fifty-one. This one's got the first appearance of Spider Goblin. Bob's favorite kind of goblin, a spider goblin. We also got Blood Hunters number two. This one's got the first appearance of Dante, 
whomever that is. Dante, you say. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, Carnage. Uh, you know what? I don't have the issue number in front of me. I believe it's nine, but this one's got uh, a weapon that is fatal to symbiotes. Uh, we've got Ultimates number one, so finally Ultimates number one drops. Yes. I've heard some really, really good stuff about this book. I have not read it yet, but I'm hearing that it ties in like what's going on nicely, you know, in the background of uh, Black Panther, uh, Spider Man, and X Men, like really nicely, and it uh, uh, brings back stuff that's going on with the Maker and, and all of that. So some really cool stuff to look forward to in reading that. We also got Venom thirty four, Wolverine Blood Hunt. Um, I got the really nice looking Kevin Eastman variant for that. Nice. Yeah, really nice cover. Uh, we also got the finale to uh, Jeremy Holt's What If Venom, issue number five. So that finally wraps up. We've got Ghost Rider Final Vengeance 4, a fantastic series. It's been going on. Bob, we got X Men 35, aka X Men 700, aka the end of the Krakoan Age. So this is supposed to be supposed to be the final book in all of the Krakoa X-Men stuff. So after this is a whole new era in X-Men. I don't know what it's going to be called. I don't know what it's going to focus on, but I know it's not supposed to be Krakoa. Well, I did see some uh, solicits in the back of a comic mm -hmm. for... Um, uh, I want to say July or August. Mm-hmm can't remember which and it it had like three different x-men teams oh yeah there's a lot of X-Men it had stuff coming up it had x-men proper mm -hmm. it had uncanny x-men and then it had exceptional x-men exceptional yes exceptional. i like it <laughs> huh and i believe it actually had an x and e in it <laughs> so it know. wasn't just an x exceptional oh no well they messed up already so. yeah that's true hmm. I've heard some really good creative teams on those books, though. So, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to see what happens with X-Men moving forward. Uh, end of Krakoa, though. I, I don't know. any. I, I know you're not like a huge current X-Men follower or anything, no. but any uh, anything that stands out on uh, that you want to call out uh, in the Krakoan age? No, I'm just going to say R.I.P. Krakoa. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, uh, it, it was cool, but time to move on to yeah. something different. So that'll be fun. Uh we also got from Image Comics, Bob, Falling in Love on the Path to Hell, which, I mean, if you break down that title and think about what it's really saying here, um, you're falling in love with somebody on the path to hell. That sounds, I, I don't know, I, crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. I mean, part. that doesn't sound like the love is going to last. Yeah, um, uh, this one has that really cool uh, Star Wars inspired uh, cover that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, it's... Destined lovers, a gunslinger and a samurai, are moodily, sorry, mortally, <laughs> moodily, mortally wounded in a world apart and wake together in purgatory, ruled by a ruthless society of damned warriors. This one just sounds so metal. Like, it sounds really, really cool. It does. I definitely want to read that. I mean, of course, it's going to depend on how it's written and how the art is and everything mm. like that, because uh, it would be very easy to mess it up as well. But it looks like it's uh jerry duggan and gary brown not familiar with gary brown the cover art looks great though so mm -hmm. yeah could be a really really cool book maybe not but i'm definitely excited to find out um we got Philadelphia issue 36 precious metal issue number one bob the last mermaid issue number four um last mermaid has been so good so i'm excited to check out issue number four of that uh, from Boom Studios, we got Profane. Now, this one was like heavily, heavily suggested to me by our local comic book shop owner. Uh, and, and he actually, you know, asked me, he goes, what are you guys covering on the podcast this week? And when I walked in the door, I couldn't remember. I was like, uh, <laughs> and I, I said, it's one of these books. <laughs> and he goes, man, you guys should do Profane. And I was like, well, we already, you know, figured out what book we we're doing and everything. Mm -hmm. But he was like. He was like, I don't know, do what you can, do a bonus or something. I'd love to hear an episode on Profane. So I think I'm going to try to arrange that. But this one's about a Los Angeles private investigator's latest case that leads him back to a world-famous crime novelist and dangerous truths about his own life. Um, yeah, maybe it must be written re really, really well because, I mean, it can't be based on the synopsis, but it is written by Peter Milligan. So Peter Milligan, an all-star, in my opinion, uh, just some wonderful stuff. His work on X-Force and X-Statics, 
uh, some of my favorite Marvel stuff that I've ever read. So, yeah, could be really, really cool. Excited to check that out. Um, from, we also got from Boom Studios Ghost Lore, issue number 11. Bob from Dynamite Comics, Space Ghost, issue 2. Uh, I have heard some really, really good stuff about issue number 2 here. So which I which I got the um I got the cool what is it the 116 foil cover. Oh okay, did the you? The virgin foil yeah. cover. Yeah, oh man. Yeah, some killer covers on that book, but yep. yeah, I I'm hearing like that it just goes kind of off the rails here and it's it's so good, which is awesome because that first book was like just the right amount of setup and reintroduction to the characters and everything was really really good. So I'm excited to check that one out as well. Uh from DC Comics. We got Suicide Squad, Kill Arkham Asylum, issue number five. I don't know, some kind of digital token for Clayface. Do what you want with that. Uh, we got Batman 148. I'm hearing, Bob, I, I hate to do this, but I'm hearing really bad things about what's going on in Batman right now. I'm hearing oh. that just no one's having that much fun. Um, My Adventures with Superman, issue number one, came out. We also got from Archie Comics, and Bob, don't worry, I've got my copy like right over here somewhere. Uh, I'll, I'll dig through my pile, and yeah, right? Um, Archie Comics, <laughs> Archie and Friends, Blockbuster Movies, issue number one. See, I, you know, I feel like you had to pick that up. Yeah, of course. I mean, why wouldn't I pick that up? Yeah, it's really fun. It's, yeah, super cool. It's also featuring the first appearance of the Mouthy Menace Pool Noodle. So... If you pool want, noodle? yeah. If, if you want to grab your first appearance of pool, pool noodle, pool. yeah, it's in this issue. So you know, obviously. is everybody getting on the Deadpool <laughs> train now? <laughs> yeah, possibly it could be that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, from Dark Horse, we got Beyond the Pale number one. We got a new volume of Canto, A Place Like Home number one from IDW. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Alpha. Cannot wait to read that. Uh, it's going to introduce us to. Uh, this new Jason Aaron run, and it's going to envision a world without the turtles and what happens when that goes on. We also got the Monster High Pride 2024 book. From Ani Press, we got Cult of the Lamb, number one. This is a video game tie-in. And we got Zach Thompson's Cemetery Kids Don't Die, issue number four. Uh, from Mad Cave Studios, we got the Mammoth, number one. This one sounds super, super cool. Uh, the Mammoth is... I don't know, I'm trying to stall for time while I find the synopsis here, so as you can probably tell. Okay. The Mammoth is a yeah. comic. The Mammoth is. <laughs> you, did, you ever, did you ever watch Doug when you were a kid on Nickelodeon? Oh, yes, of course. You remember, uh, it was one of the early episodes, and Doug had to write like an essay or something as part of his homework, and yeah. it, was, it, it was about silt. That's what yep. it was. And and it, it was like, Silt is. Yep. And then he would keep getting distracted and go off and do other things. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely yep. me. I'm, I'm Doug, uh, by all means. Uh, so the mammoth is, uh, again, four scientists investigate a bizarre series of activity, uh, sorry, seismic activity in a forest valley that legend claims is the work of a monstrous phantom that appears for decades at a time. Sounds cool. I don't know how the hell you write a whole comic about that, so we'll have to see where that one goes. We also got the final issue of Charred Remains, Charred Remains, issue number six. And what I believe is the final issue, but I'm not too sure of the sickness. So uh, Nani, sorry, Nani, Lonnie Nadler and Jenna Chaw's The Sickness, uh, issue number five, dropped from Uncivilized Books. So those are some of the new books to be on the lookout for this week. Check those out if you've not yet. Uh, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to break down Scarlet number one. And we are back with episode 73 of the All New All Different Number One Comics podcast, here to talk to you about a, a little new number one that dropped this week in local comic book shops from Image and Skybound. Scarlet number one, written by Kelly Thompson, with art by Marco... Ferrari? Yes. Ferrari? Okay. And someone else on covers. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about this book, Bob. I'm going to read the synopsis really quick from Image's site. Mini series premiere. The next chapter of Codename G.I. Joe begins here. Shauna, right? Shauna? Shauna Scarlet O'Hara is about to take on the most dangerous black ops mission of her career. 
infiltrating the mysterious rising power in Japan known as... Hmm, <laughs> something. <laughs> wow, yeah, there's, there's no chance. Sorry. Her one lead is that her former partner, Jinx, turned something enforcer. <laughs> Bob, I'm sorry. There's there's no possible way I could say this word if my life depended on it. So The clan's name? Yes. Arashi Kid. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, what Bob said. Um, <laughs> now Scarlet must use her very particular set of skills to survive undercover and discover a shocking weapon that could change the balance of power on Earth. Red Hot writer Kelly Thompson and artist Marco Ferrari introduce some of the most anticipated characters to the Energon universe in ways you'll never expect. So that's their synopsis there. Let's go over the creators for a second. We've talked about Kelly Thompson on here plenty of times, but um, Kelly Thompson definitely deserves to be talked about plenty more yes. times because yes. Kelly Thompson is freaking awesome such a good writer really really cool writer uh she's worked on captain marvel on uh one of my favorite bob and, and this is I'm, I'm looking for my uh my big hardcover oh here it is uh, yeah this is just one of my favorite things that's you know a little off the wall that i, I don't know but man i just love her run on idw <laughs> gem and the holograms i can see that i, God, I, I so can definitely good. see that yeah it's it's good yeah if you ever if you ever want to be entertained you know, and just have some fun. Like, take this book home and read it. Because it's it's really good. Uh, I'll leave it up there, you know. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's worked on Jim and the Hologram. She's worked on It's Jeff, the Infinity comic from Marvel. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Black Widow. Uh, uh, Black Widow, an essential read for anybody who reads comics. Her run on Black Widow. She worked on Hawkeye, on Mr. and Mrs. X, on Birds of Prey presently, uh, which is... Okay, I'm Ooh. sorry to say this, but one of the very few books at DC that's crushing it right now is is all because of her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's worked on Deadpool, on West Coast Avengers, and Kenny X-Men, A-Force, Jessica Jones, Blind Spot, Black Cloak, one of Bob's favorite books. Yes. Uh, Black Cloak. Yes. Uh, Star, Heart in a Box, Nancy Drew, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Pink, um, Star Wars, Captain Phasma. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, am I saying this correctly? Uh, the Call, one of my favorite books. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on and on. But just know that uh, Kelly Thompson is... She's done some things. She's done some big things. She's done some great things. Kelly Thompson is pretty much a guarantee. I hate to say that about anybody, but it's like it's it's like Kyle Starks. You know, like, if I see her name, I'm like, this is going to be know, a good it's book. Be yeah. good. Like, I, there's... There's people who do really, really good books, and then also, you know, every now and again, they'll slide something in that it just isn't quite my thing. Kelly Thompson is not one of those people. Anything she does. I, I, w I was going to say, I haven't read near about <laughs> as much Kelly Thompson as you have, mm -hmm. but everything I've read has been top notch. Oh, yeah. Very, very outstanding stuff. Um, how about Marco Ferrari? He's uh, done work on through Image for Frontiersmen. Uh, Aftershock for Patience, Conviction, Revenge, uh, American Gothic. Wow, remember that uh, comic book company? Uh, Killbox Chicago. And he's done a little bit of work on Transformers and Duke, but I'm, it, I think it's just some exclusive covers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely some exclusive covers. So, yeah, uh, Marco, like a little bit newer to the game. Definitely not as uh, storied as Kelly Thompson there, but... That's okay. You got to get your foot in the door somehow. Yeah. What uh, what better place to do it than in the Inner John I universe know. with Kelly Thompson as your writer? Like, just imagine uh, for a second, if you will, Bob. Just imagine you're like an up and coming artist, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe Image reaches out to you. You reach out to them. Whatever. However it works, and, and you're just like, they're like, all right, here's the pitch. Um, you're gonna be doing a Scarlet book, and the writer on the book is gonna be Kelly Thompson. Like, at I'm that in. point, like, do you just, like, pee your pants? Like, what do you even do? I'd be like, how the, how can I measure up to Kelly Thompson? That's going to be very hard. So. Well, I mean, it'd, it'd, be one of, it'd be one of those things. And I've heard stories about, you know, maybe not the comic book industry, but I've heard stories about that where, you know, they, they where people get put with, like, a dream job or something. Mm -hmm. And on the inside, 
they're squealing with joy, yeah. but on the outside, it's like poker face. <laughs> they're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, Kelly Thompson. Yeah, I've, I've heard her name. That works. Okay. And, 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 <laughs> and then they go home, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, wait a second. My favorite book in the entire world, uh, Birds of Prey, that I'm reading right now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so cool stuff. Yeah. And and like I said, Bob, if you're ever looking for a good time, take this book home with you. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm going to go over my synopsis that I wrote here. Uh, Scarlet opens with Scarlet <laughs> emerging from the water in Monaco. She changes into a dress and loads her guns and she enters a party. Scarlet notices Jinx at the party. Jinx seems to be liberating women who are the victims of human trafficking. Um, and, you know, I wrote that on my first read. I'm not too sure if she was liberating anybody or what. So, anyways, we'll get into that when we get into the book. But, uh, uh, which is also Scarlet's mission. Scarlet continues to ask for permission to engage and is denied. Jinx takes off with one of the girls, and Scarlet rescues 12 other hostages. When Scarlet returns to headquarters, she's told to leave since she didn't follow the right protocol or whatever. Scarlet goes home and Stalker is there. This is very interesting to me because this Vince man's name is Stalker. Uh, is Code there, name is Stalker. Right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And he's there to recruit her. We get some flashbacks to Scarlet and Jinx four years earlier. Scarlet explains that Jinx left her a secret message that translates to not to follow her. Uh, then Snowjob shows up and drops Scarlet off in some remote area, and Scarlet notices more messages left for her by Jinx. Uh, we get a big ninja fight, and then Scarlet spots Jinx, and then a second ninja fight happens. And Scarlet makes it up to Jinx and the Headmaster, and she offers herself, and we learn in flashbacks to Stalker. Uh, Sc Scarlet's mission is to bring Jinx home. And the final few panels we see that scarlet is struck by a sword that belongs to storm shadow and, and ju just to correct you yes please, please correct me. yes you said headmaster uh -huh. it's hard master oh hard master okay okay good yeah because i was like what is this like the well, uh, head saved master. by the bell yeah. <laughs> yeah oh man i want a kelly thompson saved by the bell book imagine how good that would be <laughs> oh god yeah that, that would be a good one i Kelly Thompson, if you're listening, look, you gave me Jim and the Holograms. Please give me a Saved by the Bell book. Oh, God. I, I can't even imagine. Bob, let's, I don't know. Look, you're going to have to leave this one. Let's break mm -hmm. it down, though. But um, I, I had a good time without having much knowledge of any of this. So getting into the story, how about the beats? How did you feel the beats flowed? So the, the beats worked well for me. I could definitely see it not working well for everybody because mm -hmm. it's not... It's not just one linear story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does jump back from, like, you know, um, current to, you know, flashback. And yep. then it goes to, um, you know, uh, Scarlet and Stalker talking to talking to her house. Mm -hmm. and, and then it shows, you know, the mission. But then it goes back to Stalker and Scarlet talking. Mm -hmm. So, again, while I, while I can see the, the beats don't work well for everybody, I mean... I was, I was able to follow the beats, no problem. So the beats worked for me. Yeah, and let me say this as somebody who's you know pretty far removed from any G.I. Joe lore or anything. Like, <laughs> um, this has just like the right amount of like exposition and stuff right. in it for me, and I know we're not on that right now, but either way, it's like I didn't need to know a lot. The only thing that was left up in the air for me really were, were two things. I didn't quite understand what Jinx's mission was like at the party, but I don't know if I'm supposed to know what that is just yet. And I also kind of like got this weird feeling that like maybe the two were more than just like really good friends at some point. Like maybe they were like in a relationship or something. But I don't know if, you know, maybe I'm looking too much into something like that. No, I, I, I felt I felt I feel like that's the direction mm -hmm. that they're heading also. Yeah, but for me, the, the beats work really well. It's it's. It's straightforward, and like you said, it's not linear, but it is straightforward enough to, you know, I mean, especially the way that Marco is illustrating it. You know, we know when something's a flashback. That's very right. easy to tell. Right. Uh, and, 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 I mean, and I mean, with the writing, Kelly Thompson, you know, does, you know, enough, gives mm -hmm. enough exposition when we're needed where you can, you know, follow. Yes. You know, where it is when it's going, you when it's doing the back and forth. 
Yeah, and I would say something like this. This is, I mean, it seems like I can only talk my side of it, which is not a huge G.I. Joe fan. I can't speak for your side, but I think this totes the line perfectly of, you know, this obviously is going to, like, have enough payoff and, and enough, you know, things in it for huge G.I. Joe fans to get a lot of enjoyment out of this. This also definitely works on my end. You know, somebody who doesn't oh, yeah. know anything. Oh, like, definitely. Yeah, it works well. It's, it, like, I... It's very straightforward. I understand who the character is. I understand her mission. Like, it, it makes sense. Um, so I think that that, for me, would be the most important thing that I would want to convey here is, like, you can go in as a G.I. Joe fan, as somebody who was, like, you know, even at the level of, you know, that you are, and, and definitely get something enjoy, you know, that you enjoy out of this. And you can go in it the complete opposite way and know nothing and be like, this was a very enjoyable review. Yeah, and see, getting away from the review for a moment. Yeah. Um, that's what this Energon universe seems to be doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it... It's been successful with that. Yeah, very, uh, yeah, of course, you know, it's still... If you're still, you know, the fan who grew up on it and knows all these characters and knows the backstories, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you're going to enjoy it. But, you know, it's... They seem to be doing like retellings and reimaginings while using the same elements. Mm -hmm. They are reimagining different elements, which again, like you just said, gets the person who may not necessarily be a G.I. Joe fan, mm -hmm. you know, interested to know more about this character. And I feel like that's the most important thing, and that's like one of the hardest things in comics because there's a lot of gatekeeping going on in stuff mm -hmm. in comics. Like we're we're not the easiest people to please no. and all of that. No, I know no, that, no, but no. Uh, you know, it's it's got to be very very hard. You know, think of something like more traditional, like jumping into Batman, like Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars, Batman, Amazing Spider-Man, stuff like that, where. You know, you pick up an issue number one, and you should just be able to jump in and 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 get like a nice story out of it and get a feel of the character and stuff. But you can't because you need all of this exposition and backstory, and it has to be written a certain way and everything. Like this, this does perfect in my opinion mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. So the yeah. the beats really worked for me. Um, the dialogue in the book, it was. I'll I'll start with this one. I can't speak for the voice of the characters because I don't know them, but it, it worked. It definitely seemed like everybody had an individualized voice here. Right. I'm getting the sense, you know, obviously that it's painted at the first couple of scenes here, that Scarlet is very, very good at what she does. But at the same time, like she if it means, um, you know, she's got to break a few rules to to get stuff done, like mm -hmm. she's going to do that. Yes. Yeah. She's not your guy for, uh, you know, making sure that protocol is, is followed and everything is done she, by the she, books. She's not your peacemaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, she's like, no, like what, what needs to happen here is this. And like, that's, it's, it's going to get done. So right. I liked her voice here. I liked, uh, you know, everybody else that, that I encountered throughout the book. Um, there, uh, we already talked about exposition. It's not exposition heavy at all. And I was honestly... When I first opened up the book, I was like, huh, we're going to like, is there going to be like, is this going to be very dialogue light? Because those first few scenes, there's not really much dialogue in at all. I think probably the first three pages, we don't even get any because she's emerging from the water. We're, we're setting the scene and everything. But as we go through, you know, there's some heavier parts. Of course, we get into uh, Stalker, <laughs> my, my favorite character name, um, Stalker there. And, uh, you know, there's... There's a, a pretty good amount of dialogue on the page. I think it all works very well. I think it's written really well. Uh, you know, it's Kelly Thompson. She knows how to write characters. So that worked for me. What about you? You know the characters' voices much better than me. So, Well, again, I mean, it is that reimagining, too. Because mm -hmm. I do know the characters, yep. but, you know, they're, you know, um, you know, reimagining yeah, these characters. Yeah, it's like a new incarnation of them. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like you said, Scarlet's one of those, you know, she's good at what she does, but if something needs to be changed up differently, mm -hmm. or, you know, in this case, when she doesn't want her superiors to know <laughs> yeah. that she's going off script, mm -hmm. I mean, she can do that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, she does have that little bit of rebellious side. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, then we get, you know, the general who is being a general and just chewing her out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got the sense, I was like, okay, is she, is she fired from the mission here? Is she, 
is she fired from her job? Not really. I think he's just kind of like pissed off at her or something. It was was the sense that I got from from that general um, mm-hmm. encounter there. But uh, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe a little open to interpretation too. But how about the narrative of the book? Uh, I will say this: it's really good at. And again, it's Kelly Thompson, so I mean, I would expect nothing less. But it's very good at you know us having that point of view character and then kind of narrating where needed um it's not overdone in any way whatsoever but uh, there are points there where you know um there's not really any actual dialogue happening but there's a narration of scarlet's thoughts or whatever like towards the end of the book and everything i i, I really like the the narrative aspects of the, this book i like the mm-hmm. way it was written i think mm-hmm. that that was done really well um please tell me your thoughts well, um, when I first told uh, somebody at our local comic shop mm-hmm. that we were covering this book, you know, of course, you know, uh, comic shop owners and employees, they always get advanced copies yep. of uh, certain things, whether it be digitally or, you know, hard copy. But, you know, he said, he, he said he'd read it, and he said it was, um, it was like, it, it was like a... Um, you know, a Black Widow spy action thriller. Yes. And, I mean, it really did remind me of, you know, Black Widow. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you have her going on that undercover mission, you know, she emerges from the water and then she <laughs> changes into the evening gown. And, I mean, she even has a compact for her makeup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I like that too, yeah. I mean, so... Yeah, she, I mean, she can, I mean, they made it to where she can certainly blend in to, you know, having to do wet work, so to speak, Mm -hmm. to, you know, being a socialite at a party. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I I really liked the narrative. Like I said, it was, I mean, it was just like a spy action. It was kind of like a spy action movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of, uh, what what was that... uh... True Lies, the the Arnold and uh... oh yeah, True Lies. Wow, <laughs> oh, oh, that's a movie I haven't thought of Ooh, in a while. Yeah, that was fun. Um, that was that was one of my uh, my my quarantine uh, watch party uh, alone. You know, uh, movies. <laughs> Anyways, uh, how about the world building? Uh, world building A plus 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 to me. Really good. They flesh out this world. Yeah, Everybody has right. been really good at fleshing out this world in the Energon universe so mm-hmm. far. Uh, they're they're really really good at it. They're getting I don't know if if they're just putting aiming top notch talent towards this, which it seems like, or if there's like a big manifesto in an office somewhere and they're like, look, we have to build out this world. There, there. I mean, I'm I'm sure you know in any type of universe, you know, behind the scenes, you know, there's a big like uh, manifesto yeah. or a bible, so to speak, yep. about you know. Um, this character does this, mm-hmm. or, you know, this happens over in this part of the world. But, I mean, look at who they've gotten as yeah. far as writers. I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about, you know, Joshua Williamson. Yeah. You're talking about Daniel Warren Johnson. Mm-hmm. You know, Kelly Thompson. Some of the I mean, best in the game. <laughs> look at how well those three can flush out worlds and characters. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it to me, it's a combination of both. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, uh, you had to have had the right writers who could flesh out mm-hmm. and tell these character stories or, you know, the entire Energon universe as a whole probably wouldn't have worked. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's quite the opposite. It definitely works here really, really well. Let's go over to the art. I don't know if we'll have uh, different opinions. Of course, we really liked Kelly Thompson's work here. Mm-hmm. What do we think about Marco Ferrari's work on on the art? Uh, how about the characters? Um, I, I guess first, let's do it like this. I'll give you a perspective on not knowing these characters at all, right? Uh, art wise, and then we'll take your perspective on knowing them really well, and, right. and, and what you thought about their takes. Uh, and let me lead with this too. Uh, I've mentioned before, I try to reserve reading any reviews or anything online until after I've read the book, so it mm-hmm. doesn't change my opinion or mm-hmm. anything. Um, I write all of my stuff. Then I check that stuff out just to see what other people thought. This was very interesting because this is getting high praise online for its writing. Like mm-hmm. A lot of people like this. 
and I'm not hearing anything bad about the art per se, but holy shit, are there not a bunch of dudes, like dudes specifically online, you know, that are saying like, why isn't Scarlett as sexy as she normally is? She's not as curvy and her dress isn't that tight. I'm like, hold on, dude. Like, what are, what, what are we looking for here? I mean, if you want a porno magazine, you can just go grab one. This is a book about a character. But, uh, <laughs> like, what? Like, one dude even said she kind of looks like a thumb. And I was like, uh, what? I'm not seeing a thumb anywhere. What are we talking about? Like, huh? Well, first, first, first of all... <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sorry if I offend people, but first of all, that's sexist and misogynistic. Very. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, secondly, what do they mean, her dress isn't tight enough? Yeah, I mean, come on, dude, this is a, this is, uh, and this I is mean, a book it, about... It, it's a comic book. <laughs> Get over it. Also, I don't think that's the intent of the book is no. to show her in this really wildly sexy light or anything. No. I mean, she's like a badass character. She's like a spy, basically. Like, I mean, yeah. maybe if she was drawn for Playboy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I thought that that was hilarious. But uh, let me get out of that and just say, I thought the character art definitely worked here. There's nothing about it that didn't work. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's a little like sketchy for my taste like i would have liked to see it maybe a little bit more cleaned up in certain yeah, areas i was gonna say that i was gonna say uh, you took the words right out of my mouth mm -hmm. i mean there uh, there were times like the the close-ups were great yeah mm -hmm. you know once you got out a little bit of a distance i would have liked to see it cleaned up a little bit yeah it's definitely got like a little more grittiness and stuff than, right. than i would expect in this book mm -hmm. I, that's not a dig on it. It's just a personal opinion. I think mm -hmm. that as far as the character designs and everything, everything's fine. I don't see any problems with that. Um, hair is a little interesting sometimes in the book through, throughout uh, with the characters, but I well, think the that's hair, okay. The hair for Scarlet is definitely... I mean, the character change is definitely, uh, definitely a uh, long way away from her G.I. Joe, the animated series look. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean, but that's all I can really say about it. It's just a, a little, I think a little cleaned up would help it uh, some, um, but I didn't have any problems with anything. Uh, the art's good. It's just interesting whenever you have to juxtapose, 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 sorry, wow, uh, <laughs> juxtapose, uh, you know. You just made up a new word. Right? Some really, really phenomenal writing with some art that's good. Uh, but it's not the greatest art I've ever seen in my life. So. It, 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 I'll put it this way. I, I, guess, I guess what we're saying is it, it's good, mm -hmm. but it could be better. Yeah. It, I, I mean, I hate to say it doesn't quite match the level of writing, but I think that that is what I'm saying. And, right. and again, like to take it back to something else, I don't know how you feel about, uh, Sophie Campbell, but um, I'm, I'm going back to, you know, my, my Jim and the Holograms book here. And just look at some of the Sophie Campbell art. Like, it's just, to me, that's just gorgeous. Like, yeah. that's that's really, yeah. really good art. Like, I would wonder what somebody like Sophie Campbell would do with, with, with a book like this. It would be very, very interesting. But um, either way, that's neither here nor there. The art is good. The character design is good, uh, in my opinion. I don't know. I, th I think we've said enough about that. How about the backgrounds? We have, you know, of course, the very, very important background test that it must pass on your end so did it pass yeah it it it, <laughs> it it's kind of on the fence because it, it's kind of one of those um you know like we talked about the characters um you know in from a distance i mean the backgrounds look good mm -hmm. but you know from a distance like I've, I've you know i've got it open to one panel on the um you know terrace of you know the house the party's at. I yes, mean, I kind of would have liked to see it cleaned up just more. Maybe, you know, maybe not be as, you know, um, I guess you would say gritty and all that. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, I don't know. Just cleaned up a little bit more, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and and I completely agree with that. That's definitely. Definitely something that I, I think we're in agree, agreement with. Mm. Um, wow. Uh, locations, 
I think the locations work fine. I have no complaints about the locations. I mean, I it, yeah, the, I mean, the locations, I mean, you don't get a greatly amount. I mean, you know, I mean, you get the party, you mm-hmm. get uh, Scarlet's house, um, you get the general's office, Yep. you get... I don't know if that's supposed to be the Himalayas or some other, you know, <laughs> snowy mountainous range. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna go the I'm gonna go for the Himalayas just for argument's sake. Yeah. And then you get the, um, you know, clan's headquarters. Yes. Yeah, and I mean it moves around, and yeah, it's definitely you know if if there's if there's one thing I know about GI Joe, you know it's. Sometimes you get these really cool snowy scenes, um, <laughs> you know, and those well, look I mean, great. you've got a character named Snow Joe. You certainly You do. know, I mean, there's got to be something to take place in snow or sure. else he'd be out of a job. Yeah, it'd be a huge wasted opportunity yeah. if, if not. Uh, Snow Joe, drop me off in that uh, dirt lot over there. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, hey, use you your skis <laughs> and, and uh, get me down this street, would you? <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, the locations work. Uh so lastly, you know, before we recommend or don't recommend or whatever mm-hmm. we do with the book, we're going to talk about colors. Uh, we have Lee Lodridge. I don't know. Please feel free to chime in with that last name there. But uh, Lee is definitely the first name, I can say. Uh, Lodridge looks good. Okay. Wow. Well, Bob, maybe I'm getting better. You, know, you never know. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm rub, rubbing off on you when it comes <laughs> to name. Um, yeah, so we got Lee Lodridge on colors here. I don't. I'm gonna say this. Nothing to me particularly stands out about the I, colors. I, the, the the thing that stands out to me is the flashback color. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I um, mean, just it. it, it got it, like those pink soft hues. And, yeah, yeah. It. I mean, it has. It's it's almost in the style of like an old home movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say one thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's... It's not color specific, but it definitely plays a part in it. And this is probably my only critique in the entire book. Mm-hmm. I think that in the ninja fight scenes with Scarlet and the ninjas there, like in the snow, we definitely could have like made a bolder statement. Um, we're on a completely white backdrop... And the final scene does have, like, a good amount of blood, but I don't know. I think I could have seen something like that, like, pop a little more. I think that's my only critique here. The colors are fine. The art is fine. I think if I was to do, like, a 10-point scale uh, going through all of the art altogether, it's something I would give, like, a 7, a 7.5 to. It's definitely not bad. It's it's better, better than normal. Um, but I just... I just don't see anything even coming close to approaching the level of writing here. Yeah, in in oh, I'm not gonna be able to find it now. Um, you did have it open, and I did I did see one panel. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, yeah, yeah. So I did I did see one panel, or a couple of panels actually, where she's, you know, it's a it's a snowy backdrop. Yep. And she's in a white suit. Mm-hmm. Just personally, and you know th- this this goes this goes to art also. Just personally, I would have liked to see you know maybe. I mean, even even some even some blood spatter in the background. Yeah, would be nice. mm-hmm. I mean, it's just kind of like got a white suit. It's a snowy backdrop. Mm-hmm. I mean. They're not the same. Sh- they're not the same shade of white, so that helps. But it, it's kind of like, okay, she. I mean, she's gonna disappear into the foreground. I mean, it's all white. I mean, again, put something. You know, like maybe maybe a couple of rocks sticking up from the snow. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe again some blood spat blood splatter. I mean, yeah. just a couple of trees. Just you know something to break it up. You know it. it it's one of those in art. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes, yes. sometimes you need negative space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Well, you know, and 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 I completely agree with that too. Uh. But yeah, this uh, overall. And anyways, you know, before I do that, <laughs> final thoughts. Um. And you know, the most important question, the the point of the podcast here. Is this enough to push it over the edge to recommend to add to 
our uh, listeners pull this. So I'll let you go first. Well, un- unfortunately, when it comes to you know books like this, mm-hmm. I'm kind of biased. Yep. Because you know GI Joe is near and dear to my heart. Yep. It's your thing. So <laughs> I mean, I'm so I mean, just personally, I'm going to enjoy books like this. Yep. But I mean, I would def- if for, if for nothing else, if you want to read Kelly Thompson. Mm-hmm. I would definitely, you know, recommend this book to anybody, and I am definitely going to continue, you know, down this scarlet path. Yeah, and I share that. Um, this is very enjoyable. It's very, very well written, as <laughs> of course it is. I think that, you know, the only things negative I can say about it is I just, I like the art. I don't think it quite matches the level of writing. I've already said that multiple times. It's not a dig on the artist. I, th- I, I don't want to come across that way. The artist did a really good job, and it's good art. It's just like, you know, how are you going to take somebody as good as Kelly Thompson and then, you know, any, anyways, it's going to be it's going to be hard to fulfill that. See, art-wise. and I mean, like well, like we said many times before, you know, yes, we will critique the art, mm-hmm. but I mean, that's not saying any of this art. We're ne- we're never going to say, you know, art is just bad or horrible no unless it comes to that point yeah no this is this is the, actually i mean good art. these are i mean everything we're saying is just more personal preferences yes pretty much um but it it, it is you know it, very visually enjoyable um mm-hmm. and i think the most important thing in my review that i can say again if there's anybody else out there like me who you know, wasn't like a huge like GI Joe like watcher or collector when you were a kid or anything like that. If it's just if it's just something you know about but you don't know much about or whatever, it doesn't matter. This this has so many ties to GI Joe and it works for a huge GI Joe fan. Mm-hmm. This also works for somebody who knows absolutely nothing about right. GI Joe. Absolutely, right. like I mean, even if you don't know who the character at the end of the book is, which is. Uh, Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow, sorry. Shows my uh, <laughs> level of see, knowledge. See, yeah. folks, I mean, he's he's talking about he's talking about people who don't know anything about G.I. Yeah, Joe. Exactly. And <laughs> he couldn't think of the character's name, so yeah. there you go. I mean, even if you don't know who that is, you can see that it's an important character to right. show up here right. and, 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 and something's going to happen with him. So, mm. so with that being said, I want to do something a little bit different here. It's not something that we've done before. Um So, you know, if if this doesn't work out or whatever, that's fine. But I would love to kind of rank these so far. And we don't have to put them in numerical order, but just like, oh, what do you see as, you know, this up against Cobra Commander or Duke, uh, you know, stuff that uh, has come out so far, uh, G.I. Joe related in the Energon universe. Where does it stack up? Yeah, it's probably hard if you haven't thought about it before. Oh, wow. Um... (laughs) So, oh, well, um, <laughs> see, and I mean, it's going to be kind of hard also because, you know, Cobra Commander and Duke have finished up. Mm-hmm. Whereas, if I was just taking the three number one issues, mm-hmm. I'd probably say, personally, personally, I think Cobra Commander is my favorite. Yeah, Cobra Commander is very good. A very, very fun book. Very first issue. A uh, very good first issue. And I'd probably have to put this as second. Mm-hmm. And then I'd put Duke as three. Not saying, you know, that... I mean, I'm saying this, but it's not It's not a wide margin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, 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 may be, it may be like... A point each. Yeah, I mean they they all work so well together. It's mm-hmm. it's really really cool. Um, yeah, and I I think I'm, God, I don't know. Uh, see, that would be such a hard question for me to answer too. If we're just basing them off the first issues and that's it, I do think that I had the most fun with Duke. To tell you the truth, <laughs> like you know, it was just it was fun. Um, and this would probably be second for me Mm -hmm. and then Cobra Commander. But with that being said, I mean, I had a freaking blast reading Cobra Commander. It's such a fun book. Well, and I mean, with, with that, with that being said, I mean, you know, I mean, 
after issue four of this, I mean, it could change. Yep. And and we still have Destro coming. Yeah. Uh, and we get a little, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's a Storm Shadow coming. Yeah, <laughs> that would be cool, right? Uh, now, what did you think about, and, and again, we're, we're kind of done here, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's just. Uh, the, the little uh, Destro preview. Yeah, the Destro. I preview. love the Destro. The Destro preview, preview was good. The the, uh, the, the Kelly Thompson uh, letter was was really cool too. I don't know if you read that or not, but no, uh, I have not. Yeah, you should definitely read that. It's really cool. Uh, but yeah, the the Destro. Um, the Destro preview kind of reminds me of um, if Destro were Doctor Doom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does, right? Huh. very cool. Uh, yeah. It's cool. Um, this is this is a lot of fun. Make sure you guys check it out. Definitely. Uh, if you're looking for a really cool Destro exclusive cover to grab, our local comic book shop is doing what all four issues, right? Yeah, uh, exclusive it, uh, covers. Yeah, connecting. It, not just not just the first issue, mm-hmm. all four issues. Yeah, uh, and all done by Tyler Kirkham. Yeah, a really really outstanding yes. uh, comic book artist. Yeah, so check that out if you're looking for a great Destro exclusive that's Gotham City Limit, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, With that being said, we're going to take a quick break and we'll return in just a moment. And welcome back to episode number 73 of the all-new, all-different number one comics podcast. Bob, it is time for us. To talk about some new books that are dropping next week in your local comic book shops. Of course, before we do that, it's disclaimer time. Welcome to disclaimer time. Gather around for disclaimer time. Grab some orange juice and cereal and sit in front of the TV. Crisscross applesauce. It's disclaimer time with Bob. Yes, you can't say Indian style anymore. I and wasn't going to. Don't I know. I, I know this is audio only, but the entire time Dan was doing that, I was just cracking up laughing because it gets longer and longer it every does. single longer, week. Longer, more intricate. You know, you got to yes. add more lyrics. Everything's going on there. But as I say this in every other week, these are just a few of the books that may or may not be coming out. Who knows? <laughs> You know, because of distribution schedules. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people may not feel like it that week. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, either way. So, if you want a more in-depth list, you know, please consult elsewhere. You know, call your local comic shop. Uh, please and thank you go a long way. Um, Certainly do. Harry Potter Owl, uh, Unicorn, Smoke mm-hmm. Signal, um, uh, Snail Mail, Snail mail. I, I love snail mail. That's one of my favorite mails um, and snails. Um, you know, buy some forever stamps and send a letter. Ooh, yeah. Forever uh, stamps. Let's that. see. You got anything else to add? Uh, you know, I, I thought of a fun one this week. Um, one that, you know, you may be able to challenge your friends and see who does the best job and everything and kind of make a game out of it. Okay. Uh, I really like paper airplanes a lot. I loved making paper airplanes in school. I, I See how far you could throw a paper airplane. Yeah, I mean, I would get in trouble a lot, you know, trying to throw them up uh, at the teacher and stuff like that when their back was turned. And, you know, they always knew it was me. But, yeah, uh, but yeah um, y- you never know. Uh, if you really try really hard, maybe you can construct a nice paper airplane, write a nice message inside, throw it over at your local comic book shop. Tell them that you want to know every title that's coming out, the uh, artist, writer, uh, colors uh, everything and i'm sure they'll be happy to do it because you went through all the trouble of getting that paper airplane message <laughs> so, please do eh, you could try <laughs> and yeah it, i mean if you're like us and you live in jacksonville florida mm-hmm. you know uh, we go to gotham city limits we do you know great owner ben mm-hmm. you know he'll probably read you everything that's coming out next week uh, ben would love to jonathan would love to help you too um and you know, there's a nice dog there named Pacer. I'm, I'm sure, I, I don't know how you're going to communicate with Pacer, but I'm sure there's some kind of way. So give it a shot. Remember the dog, remember the collar from Up? <laughs> I do. There the you go. The dog collar from Up. Okay, so invent or go buy a nice Up collar, uh, bring it to <laughs> Pacer, and I'm sure he'd be happy to discuss every book that's coming out with you. Boy, this was a really weird tangent. We <laughs> yeah, they usually are. So, starting off the list from Marvel, we have Spider Boy number eight. Bob, it's got the first appearance of Puzzle Man. How excited are you? On so a scale we, of one to ten. 
Uh, basically, isn't that arcade? <laughs> I guess maybe. So and it, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Spider Boy only going to ten? I'm not too sure how long Spider Boy was planned to go. Because yeah, it's it's just a maxi series. It's not an ongoing, is it? Uh, hell if I know. I do want to uh, show you a close up of uh, Puzzle Man there, though. He's he's a very interesting looking character. Got a cool outfit. Maybe some checkerboard uh, van slip-ons or something. I don't know. Uh, spider webs. I mean, he, he needs to get out in the sun more he, often. He is a little pale. But he, okay. he's, yeah, he's, he's very... He may have a vitamin deficiency. <laughs> well, Who well, knows? You know. Again, very weird tangent we just went on. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, sticking with Marvel, we have Blood Hunt number three. I'm so excited because Blood Hunt is so good. Uh, alternatively... Blood Hunt Jubilee comes out next week. The one shot mm-hmm. focusing on Jubilee. So very, very excited about that. Uh, but Blood Hunt, of course, does have these great incentive covers. If you can get your hands on one, they go for a lot of money. I haven't been able to get my hands on one. I'm usually pretty good at uh, being able to get those kinds of things, the 1 in 25s. But, yeah, these are... Uh, the, the 1 in 25 mm-hmm. is that nice, you know, pulp yes, look Yes, everybody cover. wants these. Yeah, so uh, good luck. But, yeah, uh, grab it if you can, I guess. Um, Stan with Marvel, we have Avengers number 15, a book I'm, I'm, I'm reading and I'm enjoying. Yeah, and this is, uh, of course, a tie-in to Blood Hunt. Um, really cool cover if you kind of zoom in and look at the details there. You got uh, Hawkeye and uh, you got uh, what Hercules. You got all kind of people. Uh, Captain America here fighting some uh, vampires. On Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of reminiscent of... Um... That Rowan cover from uh, mm-hmm. New Avengers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, years back, what was that? Around Secret Invasion. Mm, yeah, Dark I think Rain. that time. One of the one of those kind of things. But it it I mean it it's not the same. It's just very reminiscent. Mm-hmm. Uh, staying with Marvel, boy, this is really Marvel heavy. <laughs> we have Deadpool, Wolverine, World War Three, number two. The first full appearance of Delta. Don't know who Delta is, but uh, I, I didn't read that first issue of that book yet, so. Um, an imprint that doesn't get, this might be the first time they've made an appearance mm-hmm. that I know of. From Black Box Comics, we have, now, this is not Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> no. This not. is Ninja Kaiden, <laughs> yes, number yes. one. Yeah, this one, an elite soldier is unprepared to take over his deceased father's company and pet project the mysterious cadian armor which allows its wearer to see speak to and touch ghosts boy you said that very (laughs) scooby-doo yeah that was the point (laughs) i i figured um going to dc for a change of pace wow we got a dc book this week guys they always have to make at least one appearance yeah i mean if look it's usually just because there's a character in a video game but and uh, surprise, surprise, it's a Batman book. <laughs> we have. You said the secret word of the day, Batman. Uh, we have Batman Gotham by Gaslight, the Kryptonian Age, number one. The sequel to the 1989 Gotham by Gaslight one shot, a kickoff of rebooted Elseworld imprint. I'm not sure what the hell that sentence means, but um, it is a uh, new Elseworlds imprint. Which, if you haven't read Gotham by Gaslight, or, I mean, even seen the animated movie that is based off, Mm -hmm. you know, the graphic novel, Gotham by Gaslight is a great, you know, retelling of, you know, Gotham City, it's Gotham City in the Victorian age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good stuff. Essential reading, definitely. Really cool. Uh, We have a giant size Daredevil number one. Bob, get excited. Kingpin is getting some powers here. I didn't know he had powers in the first place. Uh, yeah, he's got, um, I don't know. Uh, I was going to try to think of something clever and funny <laughs> to say, but I couldn't think of anything. Yeah, I, I, I saw the gears turning, <laughs> yeah. but... They just didn't connect. They weren't, yeah. going, they weren't <laughs> yeah. going any specific direction. Yeah, very true. And rounding out the list, going back to Marvel, we have Scarlet Witch number one. So excited for Steve Orlando to be back on Scarlet yes. Witch here, giving us a new volume of Scarlet Witch. 
The Scarlet Witch has carved out a haven for herself in upstate New York, but she has drawn the wrath of a primal force unlike anything she's ever faced before. So it's not Cthulhu. I don't think so. She hasn't faced it before, so... Yeah, uh, Cthulhu? <laughs> has she faced Cthulhu before? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we had some wacky books like in the you know late 60s and stuff, so yeah, who true. knows? Anything that, could happen. That is true. Bob, we have three books on the wheel here to talk about. Um, you know, we've got Scarlet Witch, number one, written by Steve Orlando here, representing Marvel Comics and our uh, lovely wheelofnames.com wheel spinning, not sponsored by. Uh, we've got Batman, Gotham by Gaslight, The Kryptonian Age, number one, representing the DC side of things, and representing the independent books from Boom Studios and all-star writer Greg Pak we have Unlawful. So we're going to see where we land on this wheel here and uh, what book we're going to be covering next week. Bob, it looks like you got your wish. We're going back to the Victorian age with nice. Gotham, or I guess rather the Kryptonian age, with Gotham by Gaslight, yes. Kryptonian Woo! age number one. <laughs> Wait, could you hear that? On the, yes. Oh, nice, nice. Well, hopefully the... Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on anymore. My, um, my interface used to... Uh, have all the audio uh, go through that, but yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I mean, let's just, let's just call them happy accidents. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, happy accidents work for me. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it will it will be it will be nice reading about <laughs> Batman, but not Bruce. Well, not Batman as we know him now. Yes, yes, very true. Uh, different take on the bat. Yes. I'm cool with that. I mean, he's still gonna be brooding. I'm sure. Sure. Um, I think we just made our uh, newest shirt, by the way. I think I just, you know, it rhymed and everything. So that's it. Different take on the bat. I'm cool with that. That's our new slogan for <laughs> the latter part of 2024. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Uh, maybe we'll make some stickers. Uh, either way, that about wraps up the show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking us out. As always, you can check us out online and all the various social places that we hang out. But... You can use the hashtag on the All Different Nation to be entered in our weekly giveaway to win a copy of the book we just covered. Check us out on Instagram at ANAD underscore number one comics podcast, on X at ANAD and O comic pod, and on TikTok at ANAD number one comics pod. We're also on YouTube under the comic book channel. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>